unforgettable. And you certainly are. Good morning this morning. Unforgettable. How are you this morning? <laughs> well, Viewpoint is the name of the show, if you might have forgotten. For the two or three of you out there that are still listening this morning. Uh, the... Uh, <laughs> Well, wherever two or three are gathered. <laughs> <laughs> where two or three are gathered together here uh, for an important uh, discussion this morning, seriously. Uh, we're very happy to have our guest. I'm going to have you, Judith, in, introduce him in just a minute. Uh, kudos, Judith Kay. Uh, if you have one or two, you might just jump right in here. I'd simply like to thank the uh, uh, Kiwanis and the Oasis folks for banding together, putting on a whale of a uh, chili uh, lunch last, uh, last Saturday. Uh, last yeah. Yeah, Saturday. That's yeah, well, true. What day is today? Anyway. <laughs> uh, you can tell it's Wednesday. The big paper came just a couple days ago. Oh, yeah. The big paper was there two you days You count ago. from there. We had trouble getting the big paper <laughs> in our neighborhood for a while. Anyway, uh, Kwanis and, and uh, Oasis folks put a great luncheon on for a little fundraiser. Uh, well done. And uh, in that vein, I'd like to remind folks that we're going to have a... Uh, uh, the Legion breakfast uh, uh, in honor of the uh, honor flight and uh, that's coming up here very very quickly and uh, I'd like to urge folks to go out and attend that. Do you have any uh, kudos that you'd like to jump in with this morning? Well if I could just kind of piggyback on to yours I think that it's it's been so heartwarming to see the whole community really get behind the oasis after that darn fire mm -hmm. And uh, everybody seems to care that it get off on good footing again and be willing to kick in, put their money where their mouth is. And uh, that's what's nice about living in a small town. I think sometimes in a bigger city, it's easier to be anonymous or to just say, oops, that's too bad. That's not my job. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. don't say yeah. those words. That, that just like fingernails on a blackboard to me. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, before we get into our guests, you know, uh, I think my views on the general Bill Affair TV are pretty jaundiced because there's not much out there, frankly. <laughs> uh, I jumped onto PBS, which is, uh, is what I want to do a lot, and last night I got three hours of really decent programming. Uh, first, uh, this apropos of our conversation this morning, uh, the year 1964 and all the strife and unrest and, and uh, the marches and so forth down there. And uh, the election in Barry Goldwater, I still think he was right. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, then following that, uh, 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 an expose, well, not an expose per se, but an interesting program on uh, uh, North Korea, mm. smuggled footage out, uh, uh, very, very interesting. And I was about to get up and go to bed at my usual time, and I realized that Charlie Rose had on, uh, as his guest, uh, Secretary of Defense and CIA Director Bob Gates. And that was sure an interesting hour. Very revealing. Um, the, the entertainment, in that sense of the word, but it certainly was uh, educational. Why don't we get in here and introduce our nice guest? I've rappled along here enough. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about a big event of a number of years ago, and uh, we're going to talk about how we observe those events uh, here in our community. And our guests are Reverend Glenn Shelton, Second Baptist Church, Mrs. Kathy Kinsey Tiffany, and she is Joyce Kinsey's daughter, only daughter. The rest are boys. <laughs> the rest are boys. And um, Joyce kind of got the idea to, to go with a Martin Luther King breakfast and uh, Reverend Shelton hopped on board, and uh, it's been quite a success. A it's run. very well attended, and it's always a really nice affair, and it's coming up again come Monday. And so we're going to talk about it, the history of it here in Lincoln and uh, what's going on now. Thank you for being with us today. Well, again, always a pleasure to work with two fine, fine friends of mine. And, and Judy and Bill, 30-plus uh, years I've lived in the community of Lincoln, Illinois, as a pastor of the Second Baptist Church. And for uh, many years, uh, on Martin Luther King's birthday, uh, the holiday, I should say, uh, we have had uh, 
evening services at, at the church, at, at uh, what I call now the old church building, mm -hmm. and uh, not well attended, but the purpose of it was to try to keep the dream of Martin Luther King Jr. alive. And uh, when we were blessed to uh, build a, a new facility, uh, we continued that practice. And um, Joyce Ken Kinsey has always been a participant in our services. She, she was every year she would be in attendance. And I guess it was about our third year at the new facility that uh, uh, I began to, uh, and it just came to me, it wasn't anything planned, and it was almost at the conclusion of the services. <laughs> and we had services, I would use uh, different pastors as speakers uh, for the evening, they would join in and uh, help with the program developing and printing out the program for everyone. Then I would uh, have the church give a, uh, a little reception afterwards mm -hmm. to keep the fellowship uh, going. And uh, it came to me and, uh, that we needed to do something different to uh, get the community in Logan County more involved. Uh, and many of the pastors that I talked to said that during uh, uh, evenings that uh, they had something uh, going on and they found it difficult to uh, be in attendance. So the, I've been to uh, Martin Luther King breakfasts uh, all over the, these United States and so the breakfast ideal came uh, uh, to me and uh, I made mention to it uh, and I saw Joyce sitting there in the, in the pew and I said the only person I know who could really coordinate this and get this going is uh, Joyce Kenzie and she <laughs> 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 uh, she I jumped said, on that ladder right she, now yeah, she, well that was Joyce she, that's right she, <laughs> she took that and yes marvelous she did such a great job in, in using the facilities uh, uh, at the Maple Club <coughs> as a beginning point of, of, of the breakfasts if uh, anything uh, any success and we've had success we have now have an endowment scholarship and mm -hmm. not using the funds we raise here uh, just to try to get uh, some students some help but now it's an endowment where we can help not only one but several students uh, who want to attend Lincoln College uh, I had no idea of what we were going to do with the money I thought about a scholarship and Joyce says that's a good idea however why don't we keep it in the community and there's Lincoln College right here and, and uh, uh, I'd like to do that Joyce you know what's best you you this is your baby and so she uh, established a scholarship fund uh, at Lincoln College Lincoln College was on board. They have uh, joined in and really taken the, the bull by the horns and, <clears throat> and made sure this is going on. After Joyce went home, and when I use that term, that means after she uh, went to sleep and woke up in Jesus' arms, uh -huh. uh, Kathy uh, came on board, and I mean, all the way, all the way. Uh, well, she's her mother's daughter. Yeah, oh, just gosh, like yes. her. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Like her. Those and are pictures to fill. Oh, I, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But she has uh, uh, been on board 100%. Uh, we, we started back at the Maple Club under uh, Kathy. She did <clears> a <throat> wonderful, wonderful job. This year, uh, unfortunately, uh, I was incapacitated for uh, several months and uh, uh, with uh, back problems and 
operation effort that, that uh, came Yeah, out. the rumor without you were taking the cure, let's put that, let's put that aside. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's bury that. Yeah, let's bury that rumor. <laughs> yeah. no, seriously, uh, uh, you, you were down for a good while, but yeah. you're happily you're back and rolling again. Yes, now. and I am happy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. And so, uh, Kathy and uh, the staff at, at Lincoln College have done all of the work uh, to put this breakfast uh, on. Uh, well, we have to give Les Plotner some kudos yeah, okay. as well. We never want to leave out Les. <laughs> <laughs> Les is the best. <laughs> well, we, we don't want to stroke him too much. He's hard to live with. <laughs> No, seriously, uh, uh, Les has done a great job as chairman of this uh, event, and it's a huge, it's a huge event. Uh, it's just uh, uh, psychologically, it's a, it's a great event uh, for the community. Um, Kathy, uh, you've been hard at work planning on this. Uh, anything uh, pop up that uh, has come up at the last minute that gives you any concern or worry? Not worry, really. Um, it's kind of amazing to me that. Um, even though we do start planning uh, several months in advance, uh, a lot of it can't really be known and done until the very last minute, but it does somehow come together mm -hmm. um, every year. Um, I, I think we uh, should take some pride also in the fact that we've kind of grown it into an event that now, um, you know, with the Maple Club no longer being under um, our own, my, my own ownership, we've moved it out <coughs> to the college, and that's given us the opportunity to kind of change the structure of how the funds are raised with table sponsorships and um, doing some things event planning-wise that we couldn't really do at the Maple Club very easily. Um, and so while um, it was nice uh, to have it out at that, that facility and um, it, it um, just seems to be more profitable from the fundraising standpoint mm -hmm. to have it at the college and um, and I have to I have to give a lot of credit to uh, Cynthia Kelly as well she's mm -hmm. really driven the details she's a trooper isn't she yes, mm -hmm. yes. and um, so we have at this point about 17 different sponsors either they're uh, sponsoring the breakfast to underwrite the costs of uh, the breakfast itself has has become a little bit more expensive back when oh, my mother yeah. was doing it of course mm -hmm. that was all under her um, business she donated all of her time she donated she got a lot of donations of food and of course you can't ask another business to yeah. underwrite something like that um, for free of charge but um, so the costs of putting on the event have, have gone up, but so has our sponsorship. So I, um, I uh, am grateful to those people that have um, done that. Uh, <coughs> and then on top of that, then to have some money left over to provide these scholarships. The other real key um, thing that happened, as Glenn mentioned, is we went towards the um, endowed scholarship. Um, fund mm -hmm. and um, we were able to do that largely through a matching grant provided through the Woods Foundation so again um, another great resource in the community that deserves definitely gave back lots of really worthwhile mm -hmm. yes things they pick and choose and uh, they choose well yes mm -hmm. yes Oh, go ahead, Kathy. You had, you had something you were going to comment well, about. Well, I, I mean, uh, just I want to make sure that, that we recognize those sponsors. So I have a list of those. Would it be a... It won't hurt. Okay. It won't hurt. So the breakfast sponsors this year we have so far is Lincoln, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Town & Country Bank, Lester & Gretchen Plotner, the City of Lincoln, Gazzardo's Italian Villa, Eaton Corporation, and Integrity Data. Uh, the table sponsors so far this year, and there's still time if you're interested, Lincoln Police Department, Harris Hodnett Insurance Services and Mor Moriarty Insurance Services, Rick Ham, State Farm Insurance, State Bank of Lincoln, Novel Ideas in Memory of Joyce Kinsey out of Hartsburg, Eaton Corporation, Roger Webster Construction, K 
Castle Manor and St. Clair's Manor and Brow, Inc. Pretty Wonderful. Neat, you know, table sponsors. Yes. That's stepping up to the plate and, yes. and swinging a good bat. Yes. yes. It really is. Yeah. That, uh, that, that's kind of the nucleus of, of, of getting your major expenses kind of covered. Yes. And of course, you're working with a great food service with Warren Wentworth. Yes, folks and at, uh, he does a Lincoln great College. job of oh, making okay. a, a, a very nice, nice. I event. said to my grandson Jerry when he was a freshman or sophomore out here at Clinton College, uh, uh, "How do you like the food?" Well, it's okay. Well, we went away to Western and Macomb. We found out it was better okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not your yeah. typical, typical college fare. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's no. the it's, Warren, but. His presentation. Yes. Oh, yeah. Also, the interesting thing about Warren and uh, and that whole staff and their great staff is that the way they decorate the yes. uh, student uh, dining room yes. or dining hall uh, over the various holiday seasons, it's always a festive. Mm -hmm. uh, right, mm -hmm. whatever the whatever the event mm -hmm. is, uh, they've got something. Does uh, a fantastic job. These kids don't realize it until they go home and get off campus or go somewhere yes, else. Yeah. Uh, if this, uh, if Mr. Uh, if Mr. Uh, Ash is ready, I think at this point in time, we'll take a little commercial. Then we're going to talk a little bit about Martin Luther King and some of the background and how all this gets started. Okay. Right back live here in the studios of WLCN, the program of Viewpoint. Uh, Mrs. Busby to my right. And, uh, Hopefully, always. Uh, couldn't run this thing without her, Jim. Uh, our guests this morning are uh, Reverend Glenn Shelton and Kathy Kinsey, uh, promoters and uh, good ones at that of an event that's become a watershed event here in our community, the Martin Luther King Breakfast, uh, a great community uh, activity. And uh, without somebody pushing it, getting it organized, uh, these things don't happen. So. Uh, we thought it appropriate since we're going to have that breakfast this Monday. Tickets are still available, are they not? They are. Yeah. Maybe you better say the where and the how much. Yes, and right. so give us forth. the details here. Okay, the tickets are going to be ten dollars, um, and I, I I would mention also that's the first time we've raised the the ticket price in all these years. But as you know, the cost of everything is going up so we felt that that was I did notice that Kathy I well I probably shouldn't have mentioned it then <laughs> <laughs> you've Things ruined my day thank you very much oh I didn't know but, that um, <laughs> anyway the tickets are available through um, myself and Les uh, Plotner uh, through the Second Baptist Church the First Presbyterian Church as well as the Lincoln College office uh, Cynthia Kelly um, so it would be well to get your tickets, but uh, but we're not going to turn away walk-ins. Or they're available at the door as well. That, that's mm -hmm. important to note. Right, right, uh, right. Somebody might not be sure that they can make it until the last minute, yes, and they're going to be very welcome. Mm -hmm. right, right. And right. it's kind of a twofer, because we already established the fact that you're going to get a lovely breakfast. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's great. And you're also going to get a very nice program. Yes. And I just... It was just brought to my attention that Reverend Carol Richards, who is a really fine fellow, also has a background. Uh, so he's really vitally interested yes. in this. Yes. Having uh, marched in the yes. various demonstrations in yes. the South. Tell us a little bit about that so people will know uh, what Dr. Richards is going to be speaking about. Well, I believe Kathy can speak very much to... Uh, Dr. Richards uh, uh, work here in the community uh, and he's always been a person concerned uh, with people uh, and their plots and, uh, in life. Talking with him years and years ago I found out that uh, he <coughs> now, Glenn, you promised you'd use your preaching voice. You're That's going right. to have to do that. that. That's right. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, but, 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 but remember, we're not under a sermon. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Glenn tells you, if you come to his church, if you listen to him preach, you better pack a lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of control then. <laughs> I'm not in control. <laughs> but but and, go right ahead, sir. And... and uh, he, he shared with me some of uh, his experiences in uh, civil rights, which uh, I was surprised uh, to hear. And uh, 
he he's, he's a low key when it comes to that. And he he did mention that uh, I told him I had never marched with uh, Dr. King uh, mm -hmm. uh, at, at all. Uh, I marched in Cicero uh, with under uh, uh, one of his lieutenants, uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson when we uh, marched there to try to tear down some barriers that prohibited uh, people of color uh, mm -hmm. from um, staying there, living there, uh, shopping there. And uh, he said he had marched with Dr. Martin Luther King and also with his wife. Uh, he had marched mm -hmm. with Coretta Scott mm -hmm. King also and uh, I took that as my, this is a person I need to know, uh, what was it like to, to march with him. And <clears throat> I remember my Cicero experience that uh, Joan Ritter was mayor here several years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Her husband, Bob, was a state policeman. Mm -hmm. And when we marched in Chicago, uh, Cicero, uh, we had to have state police escort mm -hmm. and they had shields and they had to shield us as we walked through the streets because people were throwing bottles and mm -hmm. rocks and stuff. Now mind you, this is Illinois. A yeah. This, yeah. Is, not, this yeah. is not below the Mason Dixon yeah. line. Yeah. This is Illinois. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't know until I made mention that I, my march was uh, in Illinois and uh, uh, Bob then told me, he said, uh, well, I saved your life then, you know, he was, <laughs> he yeah. said, yeah. I was a state policeman assigned to protect uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, you all of the demonstrators there, and I had uh, the shields there, and from there, of course, our friendship even <clears throat> grew a little bit stronger, but with Dr. Carol Richards, his one, he had a passion for equal rights, equal opportunity, civil rights, that everybody uh, should have a right to pursue uh, life, liberty, uh, uh, and that happiness that comes, comes along with it. He took a lot of flack uh, from friends, families, uh, associates, and acquaintances for joining in uh, that, those marches and those demonstrations that uh, were down south, which is a little bit more violent than what we experience here in the uh, Midwest. It, it was overt rather than any covert kinds of activities down south. And yet he stuck right with it and never backed down, held his head high. I didn't get that he ever was uh, arrested, but uh, he came very, very close to it. Uh, he was a kind of a guy who obeyed the law. If the law enforcement told you to move, uh, then he moved. Mm -hmm. But until they said that, he would continue uh, his, his march. He's a man that was after my own heart. Uh, uh, being married and having a family, it was difficult for me to go down south and, and demonstrate something that I had a passion for. But he was there his passion was in action all, all of the way. I'm amazed at uh, this man and his steadfastness uh, when it comes to human rights. You know, uh, Dr. Richards is just a bit less than 6'5 and 250 pounds. And just a bit. <laughs> and um, <laughs> when you see the films of the people in the marches right. and the dogs and the batons or whatever you want to call them that the police had. Mm -hmm. Holy Friday. It's it's just it's just frightening. I I admit I'm my mother's child in so far as I can cry over a good commercial. But as you talk about these things, it really makes you feel very emotional because how in the world can people think the way they think? I I just I just yeah. don't get it. We revisited that last night on this American Experience program. Mm -hmm. uh, it was showed a lot of footage of those marches and so forth down right. there. And, and you know, it caused you to pause and reflect, how could that be? Well, right. it was a 
fact of life. That's that, the way it was, it was down that there. That time. That's right. Even even here in in Logan County, uh, I moved here thirty years. Well, this is my thirtieth year, going on my thirtieth year here in uh, Lincoln, and uh, I have seen tremendous progress uh, in, in terms of race relations mm -hmm. uh, here in uh, Lincoln. But when I first came. It was uh, not the best. Even I, uh, before I moved here, I was back and forth from Springfield to mm -hmm. Lincoln. And one night we were going to move here, and I told my wife, uh, let's stop at the store and start spending our money here since we're going to move mm -hmm. here. We need to stop at the store and get some groceries. On my way, going past Lincoln College, um, I had a uh, sheriff uh, uh, patrol car began following me. I had a severely handicapped young man in, in the back seat and he looked and, and kind of motioned uh, 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 that someone was following. I said, fine, it's, it's okay. We're not doing anything. Yeah. And uh, next thing I know, there's two following. And uh, so I pulled into the old Kroger's uh, mm -hmm. uh, where the lumber company is now. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, then the lights went on. One car got behind me, another patrol car got on the side of me, and one came up and got in front of me with their lights going on and everything. And I instantly became uh, disturbed. Uh, to say the least. That sounds reasonable and, to me. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and what happened was the two got out of the car and uh, I got out of the car. I drove right up in front of the door so that people coming in and out could hear me. Uh, and uh, I asked, why are you stopping me? Uh, and uh, they didn't give me an answer. Two others went around my car showing the shining their lights in my wife's face and this poor fellow's face who is now just beside himself. He doesn't understand what's going on. Yeah. And they're demanding uh, driver's license and things like that. And I told this one place when I said, please, uh, arrest me now because I'm going after those two back there who are harassing my wife and that handicapped child. So you might as well arrest me now because I'm getting ready to move. And I was loud, I was very, very loud. Finally, I would given my license, they ran it. And anyway, I found out that uh, he was making a courtesy stop said I license, my lights on my back license plate was out. That was went, a euphemism, by the way. Yeah, I <laughs> went back there and the light was on. So I beat on the trunk and I kicked the place and <laughs> trying to get this light out uh -huh. to see whether or not there was a short in or something in my license. So there's nothing going on here at all. Fortunately for me, one of the uh, my employees at that time, uh, Dan Rivera, uh, no. he, uh, I told him about my experience uh, that night, the, the past night. He couldn't believe it. And so now I had three sheriff patrol cars. So he called the mayor, Pete Andrews, and uh, Bob Patterson was the sheriff. I don't mind putting the names out there on my experience. I made it public over the years anyway. And uh, they called me and asked me and apologized and et cetera, and et cetera. And I found out that uh, that was the entire Logan County Police Department. Uh, that was their mindset that, at that time? No, there no, was that nobody was out in the county. All, all that that ship, oh. those three oh. were. I see what you said at Kroger's, giving me a courtesy stop. <laughs> and uh, needless to say, something was done about that. Those are ex sort of the experiences that I experienced mm -hmm. here in Logan County before I moved 
uh, here. Uh, I can honestly say there was targeting, there was harassment. I had a deacon of the church who lived in Decatur driving 33 miles an hour on Woodline, stopped, told he was speeding, checked his license, everything was fine, and told him to get on to Decatur, back to Decatur, because we don't drive la like that here in Lincoln, Illinois. Oh. The, the types of little wow. bitty uh, harassments and, and things uh, like, like that against people uh, uh, of, of color. Those have all changed. I've seen the progress here in mm -hmm. Logan County and Lincoln in, in particular. One of the things that I've learned is when you get to know somebody, your opinion, how you were raised, uh, your environment that you were raised in, opinions about other people, especially people of color, changes once you meet that a person of color and see that that person is not what you've been told about a certain class uh, of people. And that's what I always liked is I need to get to know you rather than, than, than you having an opinion about me. I want you to know me <clears throat> and who I am. Martin Luther King took that. He, 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 he even made mention, uh, you know, uh, rather be judged by my character than the color uh, of my skin. Yeah, that was one of the great phraseology yes. parts of his speech. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Uh, content, uh, you know, that, uh, that was... It changes. That sticks with everybody. It changes people, yeah. their opinions about people. And I can give you lots of experiences uh, uh, here uh, in, in, in Logan County and, and uh, 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 Lincoln in particular, but things have changed for the better. I, I live in Lincoln, Logan County, and I brag about it everywhere I go. Lincoln didn't have, Logan County didn't have the best uh, reputation uh, re in re regarding race relations. One of the things that were said was uh, be careful how you drive going through Logan County. Uh, there you're going to get a ticket, you're going to go to jail if you don't have money. You're going That's hmm. what I heard living in Lincoln. Hmm. I didn't experience that. Hmm. That's just was your reputation that came may have been true may not have been true but it was it was something that was negative and i'm finding that now not to be so true at all lincoln is a fabulous place to live and raise a family and i i came out of springfield a larger it was a town when I was born. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't a city, you know. <laughs> but but uh, being raised in in Springfield and then coming here to live was not as much of a cultural shock as one might expect. I love Lincoln. This is my town. I take it personal when people now talk negatively. Uh, about Logan County or or Lincoln, I can stand up and tell you this is one That's of the best so. places to live. Mm -hmm. Believe me, if you are a productive citizen here, you got it made. You got it made here. I don't care what color you are, what your handicapping condition is, or anything like that. What your lifestyle is, people will accept you if you show yourself. <clears throat> productive and one who is concerned with their community. Get involved in the community. What other way? You two know as well and Kathy knows just as well that being involved in the community makes the community that much more better. And makes you better. Uh, well yes. some of us some of us were lucky in their family relationships early on when we were kids. Mm -hmm. uh, those of us who were lucky were raised 
with with a better understanding of what people of color meant. Mm -hmm. We didn't have, well, of course now, mind you, we were pretty naive, we kids were, but we didn't have race relations, so to speak, when I, I wasn't aware of any at all. Right. The, the folks of color who lived in here right. uh, are all great names. Right. Uh, and I can tell you, I can tick off a whole bunch of them right here uh, who are all respected in the community. Mm -hmm. So it was an entirely, kind of a, almost a, a Pollyannish, if you will, a relationship that we had way back right. quote, in the quote good old days. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Just the opposite. <laughs> Lincoln, Logan County, predominantly white. I lived, uh, born and raised in Springfield, Illinois. When my father got out of the uh, service, discharged from the service, World War II, bought a, a, a house in a predominantly white neighborhood. I'm five years old, 1944. Uh -huh. 45, <coughs> five years old when it moved uh, in a predominantly white neighborhood. So all of my friends growing up were white. And, and we would go over to each other's homes and, and, and eat and play and, and, and things like, like that. The shock came to me is when I would go into a predominantly black neighborhood. And, and it was a cultural shock to me because it was a different culture. Mm -hmm. uh, something I wasn't used to <laughs> yeah, uh, at all. So, uh, uh, like you were saying, Bill, uh, having people of color around you uh, 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 only broadens you in your perception, your perspective, uh, in your uh, way of, of living, uh, your opinions of, about people in general. Uh, you're, you don't see uh, color, although you see color initially, color is not what uh, forms an opinion of the person that, that you have. And that was has been my experience growing up in 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 Lincoln. I mean, in uh, Springfield. And so uh, back to Carol Richards. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate that because uh, Kathy has had experiences uh, with with uh, uh, Dr. Richards in in terms of his pastorate. You do know he is also a hospital chaplain. Mm -hmm. A very good one too very very good one. very intelligent man uh, very intelligent man uh, he has his own doctorate degree and uh, I want to turn it over to uh, Kathy to tell us more because he did periodically uh, work uh, uh, at First Presbyterian yes. uh, did his uh, her mother's uh, funeral and, and everything else so Kathy well, I, I think you give me a little bit more credit than I deserve on that, but... Um, <laughs> oh, I think not. I the, think uh, not. You're your mother's up, daughter. You know, the... the uh, every year you can we, turn that been, mic toward you, Kathy, if you would. Sorry. Thank you. Um, every year we've been trying to um, have a different keynote address of some sort, and um, kind of in the last few years, just try to change up the program a little bit, although a lot of it is the same. We always have the, the two choirs. The Second Baptist Youth Choir comes and performs. The Lincoln College Choir comes and performs. Um, last year we had a dramatic reading of the famous speech um, yes, by one of, well the, one of the college students. Mm -hmm. So this year, we, in, in terms of thinking about who can we bring in, um, I actually reached out to uh, Gary Davis, who's another member of our uh, community, very um, uh, supportive of the same values, and um, he he was the one that suggested Carol Richards to me, and of course, um, it only took a phone call, and, um, and Carol was on board immediately, and um, it was so nice to be able to pull somebody from the community. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I frankly was not aware of all of the um, 
background he had with the marches. Um, I, I don't know a lot of the details. I look forward to hearing them. I do um, know that he will speak about those experiences at the event. So I guess if we need to know more, you have to come. <laughs> yeah, all right. Next well, morning. Next, mo next Monday morning. Yes. At, at uh, 7, it, the doors open and it begins. The program begins promptly at 7.30. 730 right. And the venue is the old Davidson, it's the old gymnasium at the yes, college. Yes, yes. Uh, Davidson the Schaefer. Davidson mm -hmm. Schaefer. Yeah, Schaefer. Yeah, Schaefer. Right. Yes. Well, we appreciate very much uh, your being with us, Kathy, and Glenn had to excuse him for just a minute. We thank him for being with us. Uh, close. Uh, this, you have to think about this one for just a little bit. Uh, Martin Luther King, quote, Nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. Work on that one for a little bit. Yeah. Thank you for Viewpoint. Thank you, James. Mm -hmm.